What's up guys, Scotty2Hockey here, aka The Average Hockey Fan, and a lot of things I've been hearing in Montreal media lately, and a lot of a hot topic amongst fans is whether or not Montreal should trade Jonathan Drouin at the end of this season. The guy's only been ahead for two years. When he got signed, people thought he was going to be the number one center, thought he was going to be the second coming of Montreal. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Yes, there was a lot of pressure on a young kid to produce. He was a former third overall draft pick. He's been in the league for a while now. As far as his play in Montreal, by no means has it been absolutely terrible, but a lot of this is stemming from what happened after the All-Star break this year, when he had a great start leading into the All-Star break, and he completely dropped off after the All-Star break. He had five points in the Winnipeg game, he had four points in another game, and then he went pointless in 19 and never scored another point until the very last game of the season. So there are reasons why people want to see him be shopped out of Montreal this year and traded for somebody who can help the team uh, defensively or somebody who's going to come in and help the power play more than what Drew did and be a better power play quarterback. For me personally, I wouldn't want to see him traded unless we got the value back that I feel he deserves to bring because I know his trade value may be a bit low now, but there is package deals you can do with Drew Ann that could get you a good player in return. As for Drew Ann, there was a lot of controversy with him in Tampa, and now it seems to be coming in Montreal. It almost seems to be coming full, full circle the way it did in Tampa, but obviously Drew Ann is not being sent to the AHL. There's no controversy there, but the fact that he isn't able to play center, that happened in Tampa. They wanted him to play center. He wasn't able to play center. The coach isn't calling him out in the media like John Cooper did in Tampa, but everybody else in the media is calling him out as a defensive liability, and the fans have really been getting on him, and that was happening in Tampa too. As for Drew Ann, in his rookie year in 2014-2015, he had a good start. 70 games played, he had 4 goals, 28 assists, 32 points, and was a plus 3. But unfortunately for him, the management, uh, Steve Osmond, wanted him to go down to Syracuse, wanted him to learn how to play center in the AHL and bring him up to the NHL as a center, but it didn't work out because the next year in 2015-2016, in 21 games played, he only had 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points, and was a plus 1. But then he got put back on the wing in 2016-2017, but there was already a bunch of stuff after it happening. The coach called him out in the media. He ended up being scratched in the playoffs for Jonathan Marsh so there was a point where he got dropped to the bottom six, and he ended up requesting a trade at the beginning of that year, and that was one of his best years, and he had excellent playoffs that year too, so it put his trade value way up. In that year, 2016-2017 for Tampa, in 73 games played, he had 21 goals, 32 assists, 53 points, was a minus 13, and prior to that year in the playoffs, he had 17 games played, 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points, it was a minus 1, they lost in the third round to the Penguins. The year before that was the one he got uh, scratched for Master Show, and then next year he really stepped up the playoffs for Tampa. So his trade value was pretty good. Tampa wanted a good piece for Dr Drew Ann in return. And what they got was Tampa got Sergachev and Montreal's second round pick for Drew Ann and Tampa's sixth round pick. So that was pretty much a straight up trade, except there was a second for a sixth round pick. So Tampa got a bit of extra value there, and Sergachev ended up being one hell of a player for Tampa and still is. Uh, as for that trade, I don't see it as a complete one-sided robbery for Tampa by no means. Drew Ann was top two last year in Montreal on a team that was abysmal in scoring. And as far as the team went, he was one of the better players. Like, in the power play at the end, him and Chucky had a bit of chemistry. Everybody else really sucked last year. Even Price sucked last year. And this year, he was really great up until after the All-Star break. He dropped off after that. So he wasn't terrible by no means. And he still put up 53 points despite being a defensive liability. Um... Some third overall picks in the, that are like studs that got picked over the years were Matt Duchesne, Jonathan Taves, um, Hank Sedin, and Scott Niedemar, because Drew Ram was a top three pick. But there are duds out there that got picked at third overall too, like Galchenyuk, Carl Turris, and Nathan, Hor Nathan Horton. They're not duds, they're not bad players by no means, but as far as what third overalls are projected to be, they're not great. As far as Drew Ram goes, I still feel he has the potential to be a lot better player than what he is, but there are some players I wouldn't mind seeing him get traded for, and I do have some trade proposals for Drew Ann if he was going to get out of town. Drew Ann's only 24 years old. His cap hit is 5.5 mil. He's extended up until 22, 20, uh, 2022, 2023, and his last two years of his contract, he has a modified no, no trade clause. So if Montreal was going to trade him, they definitely have to trade him by the end, but that's down the road, we don't have to worry. As far as this year, if they were going to trade Jonathan Drew Ann, there's only a few players I'd like to see brought in for Drew Ann. Mainly, they have to help defensively, or they definitely have to help the power play, and they have to be able to produce offensively. And I have two defensemen written down that I would like to see him possibly get traded for, and I have one really, really far-fetched trade that I know some fans are going to say, are you crazy, Edmonton wouldn't do that, or Montreal wouldn't do that, or they wouldn't like to see it. 
But for me personally, I think this guy would be sick as a has. My uh, as a hab, excuse me. My first trade proposal would be Jonathan Drouin, a second round pick from this year and a second round pick from next year for Darnell Nurse. Nurse is a top four D man in Edmonton who's good both ways. He would be an ideal partner for Petrie. He had 41 points in 82 games played, and he also had one goal, nine assists on the power play last year, which was a career high for him. He's extended for one year, so he's good for a year. He still has a year on his contract, and he comes at a 3.2 mil cap hit, so you'd save a bit of cap space too. You'd have to give up two extra picks with Jonathan Drouin. I know Drouin had more points, but Nurse is a defenseman. He's excellent defensively. He'd be a good partner for Petrie, and he helps on the power play. And the second... Uh, the second trade proposal I have, it's a bit far-fetched. Some people are going to say, are you crazy? But I had Jonathan Drouin, Jake Evans, Montreal's prospect in the AHL, two first-round picks, next year's first-round pick, and the first-round pick after that for Leon Drossel. I know you're mortgaging a bit of the future. You're mortgaging two possible good picks. But I think if the Habs saw Leon Drossel, you're getting a 50-goal scorer, a guy who had 105 points last year. He had 16 power play goals and 13 power play assists. He was an absolute stud. He'd be the first 100-point 50-goal scorer that Montreal had in God knows how long. And he would probably be the best Hab we had in like 30 or 40 years. And I believe he would bring the team instant contender status if you short up the defense a little bit. Because you think about it, you put uh, draw saddle in your top six. There's your number one center right there. Deneau gets to move down. He gets to move down. He gets to play his legit role, which is the number two or number three center. You can put Domi on the wing. It helps spread out your top six. It brings you 100 points, a 100-point player. You're telling us he wouldn't have put us over the top this year and at least got us into the playoffs and maybe even won us around? Draw side will be one hell of a player. You'd have to give up a lot for him, but God, would I ever like to get that contract in. And he comes with a lot of term. He signed up until, I believe, 2024, 2025. He's an 8.5 mil cap hit, which the Habs can afford. And if they wanted to trade him down the road, I believe he's a tradable player because he's so good and he brings so much. So Leon Draisaitl would be a good pickup. It's a far-fetched trade, I know. It probably would never happen, but it's something, if Montreal had it on the table, I'd love to see it happen. And my third trade proposal, I know talking Habs, but Rick would love this one because he's talking about this guy a bit, and I know he wants to see this guy in Montreal, is Jonathan Drouin in a one-for-one -one trade for Shane Gossespear. Shane Gossespear is two years older than Drouin. He's kind of got a few miles on him. He's, been, he's only been in the league since, I believe, 2014, but you look at how hard he's played and what he's done in Philly. He has a few miles on him. He's considered a vet for, four, for sure. He's a veteran D-man for his age who skates really well. He could fit good in our top four, could be a good... Uh, a partner for Petrie. He's a left-handed shot. He had four goals, ten assists on the power play in Philly last year, despite Philly struggling and not having the greatest power play. And his cap hit is only 4.5 mil, and he comes with some good term. 2022-2023 is when his contract ends. So those are some possible trade proposals for Jonathan Drouin. Now, as for myself, I don't want to see the guy get traded. I'm not hating on the kid. If he doesn't get traded, I really hope he turns it around in Montreal. Ends up on our top line again. Him and Domi and Sha thriving again. I really like that combination together when they were good. Or maybe put him on with uh, Byron and Domi, something like that. He didn't have good chemistry with a cock and any, And I believe he's too good to be playing bottom six on any team. So if he's not working out in Montreal, if he's not bringing it like he should be, trade them and bring in the player that you could. And those are some proposals that I had. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Do you want to see Drew Ryan stick around or do you want to see him go? Let me know what you think. Feel free to leave a comment. Please like this video and please ring the, uh, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers and you would be doing me a huge favor if you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell for my upcoming videos. I have an upcoming video soon about our best draft picks and I have some other trade proposals I think Montreal could do in the offseason and some UFAs I think we should pick up. I hope we go after Matthew Shane. I've heard some people say he's a cancer in the locker room. Don't believe it for a second. Look at what he's doing in Columbus. He's a great player. Go Habs, go. This is Scotty Tuhaki, a.k.a. The Average Hockey Fan. Over and out. Enjoy your day, folks.